Hi everyone and uh, hi James. Hello. Welcome to uh, this live stream on uh, twitch.tv slash Adobe. Uh, we uh, welcome almost every week amazing artists. Uh, thanks for joining and uh, don't hesitate to ask questions in the chat. We're here today to talk about motion design, animated GIFs and, uh, and especially about your work James. So yeah. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, maybe you want to introduce yourself, explain uh, what you do in life. I'm James, um, I'm an animator and director. I've been working in animation for over 10 years and um, doing different things. I worked in video games for about six years, um, did motion graphics, um, did a lot of TV commercials and for the last two or three years I've kind of specialized in doing animated GIFs, um, a lot just for fun, but also a lot for brands recently. Um, and that's kind of what I'm gonna focus on today. That's good. Uh, so don't hesitate to follow the Adobe Twitch channel. There is a follow button at the bottom. It's to just to be notified when we have a new stream with uh, artists, uh, especially on the official Adobe channels. We have like uh, artists every day streaming and working in uh, Creative Cloud apps such as After Effects, but also Photoshop Illustrator. So click on the follow button, and also we might do some giveaways uh, during the stream and give away Creative Cloud subscriptions for people. Uh, who follow the channel, so uh, stay with us. It should be interesting. Um, so if you have any question, please use the chat. Uh, we have a screen to monitor the chat and we'll make sure to, we'll try to answer all your questions, okay, basically. Uh, I don't know if we can make it, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll try. We'll try, we'll try. And uh, yeah, so I see a lot of people uh, <laughs> from Waz, you know, in France, from Crepy. Uh, that's good. So yeah, if you want to tell us in the chat where you are from, it will give us a, a good idea, you know of uh, how international this uh, Twitch is. And we already, already have a question from uh, Ihejo, who is a classic follower on Twitch okay. uh, with us. And uh, maybe you will cover that. But if you create an animation that animates and want to export as GIF, how can I get best resolution with a movie clip? Doesn't work. Uh, actually, um, James will show you a workflow, not from Animate, but from After Effects. That is, I believe, the best workflow to create animated GIFs going through Photoshop, I guess. Yeah, I think I'll do that later on, probably. I'll kind of show you how to create a GIF first and then move on to exporting it later on. But most of the way to create a good GIF is kind of done earlier on. It isn't really that much in the export process. It's really you've kind of got to think about things from the start. Um, nice. Okay, so maybe you want to... I will share our screen if you want to... Uh, Maybe showcase. We we had a video running. I can play it again. Yeah, okay, just start with talk the video. on top of it, and because it really represents uh, your work, your style. Yeah. Um, infinite loops <laughs> with uh, flat design animated. Yeah. I don't know how you define it. Just like that, really. What you said yeah. is pretty okay, much right. But, um, yeah, it's kind of just creating. Kind of, I try and create stories really, so it isn't just the. Um, a random thing looping like mm -hmm. something happens in the story and the way that it loops has to make sense within the story so it, it's kind of this one thing happening forever rather than kind of the one thing looping yeah um, it's always very colorful and um, also also always very alive like yeah. you I don't know if you can see it uh, in the chat but you you really pay attention to a lot of details like uh, it looks simple but I guess you will share with us some projects and we will um, easily see that you have to animate a lot of elements to make yeah. it so well, alive. In this video, you can see a lot of the, um, the GIFs are from a project I did in New York last year, which was 30 GIFs in 30 days oh, yeah. in New York. 
Um, and I've got the project here that I can show you for that, so I can kind of go through some of the animations that I did. Nice. Um, These animations are cool. Yes, Gio. <laughs> Gio works. I agree. So this is one from the first day that I did, which was about the New York Marathon um, that was happening while I arrived there. So I kind of did um, a character, which is kind of based on me. It doesn't look that much like me, but yeah. I, I thought I'd, I'd kind of do a character of, of myself for every day, pretty much. The head is okay. <laughs> yeah, the body's not, you're, you're not, not that, that round, but I like, doing, that I like doing round things because they're, they're kind of easy to make 3D. <laughs> Or look 3D even when they're done in 2D. So and kind of spheres so and circles. So I'll try to pick some questions on the fly. Yeah. Okay. So someone is asking, like, do you uh, create the illustrations for your animated GIF? Like, do you create everything? Yeah, I create everything. I pretty much create everything straight in After Effects. I don't often use Illustrator that much unless it's for specific kind of shapes and things, which Illustrator can create easier than with the shape layer tools. But I think the shape layers in general are pretty good. And for me, it's, it's kind of faster to do everything in one place rather than kind of importing things from different places, even though Creative Cloud does allow you to kind of um, go between um, software quite easily. Um, and you have a question from Madboy76 at the end. Maybe you want to answer yeah, this one. I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so try to, to keep the chat in English, please. It will be easier for us. I can deal with French, but that's it. Um, also, so, someone is asking, do you use Cinema 4D in your work or 3D in general? I use 3D, but I use Maya, not Cinema 4D. Yeah, because um, you, you told me that you, you learned Maya at school, right? Because I you started in school, yeah, but and also from working in video yeah. games. They don't really use Cinema 4D that much. They use Maya or like 3D Studio Max. Um, so I kind of learned from that and then just kind of carried that over to what I do now. Even though Maya is way too complex for what I actually use it for, I just know it. So it's kind of it makes sense to keep using it. Um, but yeah, this character here, he's kind of built up from lots of shape layers. You can kind of see his... So just shape layers, like classic shapes in the After Effects. You don't even use Illustrator to create that. No, but I mean, he could do. I mean, it's, just, yeah. it's just an extra, extra process of importing the shapes from Illustrator to After Effects, which, um, because I do things so quickly, and for this project in particular, I was doing things one GIF per day. It didn't really make sense to <laughs> add an extra step to the workflow. Um, so yeah, his head here is just built up from different shapes. There's a circle for the head. The beard's just um, a couple of different paths. It's pretty simple. Um, and at, at different kind of distances, there's more detail to him. So here, you haven't got any ears or mouth, but um, when I used him closer up later on, I did kind of add a bit more to him. Um, and this is just like a simple kind of 12 frame run cycle. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see all the oh, keyframes here. The keyframes there. So yeah. it's quite a lot. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, it looks simple, but. And to bring into life, you need to yeah, pay attention to a lot of details. So how many elements, more or less, here? Um, I'd say, what, 20? About 20, yeah, some of them yeah. are hidden. So there's about 20 different layers to them. Um, and the way that I kind of usually start these things is I'll kind of do it without the arms and legs first. So you can kind of see. I'll kind of start with just the feet and the body. And kind of work from there and then add in the legs afterwards because the legs are just kind of animated paths where I've just keyframed the actual path shape over. Like a morphing, you mean? Like you know. Yeah, so but I kind of do it by eye a little bit. I think I've hidden the wrong things. There we go. So I'll just kind of, and for this one, because it's kind of like a three quarter isometric perspective, it's kind of, you have to kind of oh, yeah, yeah. just do it by eye to make it look like it works. Um, and it's I can, I can see these keyframes every frame on the path. So um, I might kind of start off by just doing one every four frames and then go in between and kind of smooth that out so it's more of a smoother movement. We have Kyle who's surprised to see that you are not using rubber holes. Yeah, well, I think when I started this project that really kind of wasn't around. Um, uh -huh. It kind of got released during the project almost. <laughs> and I've used it a bit since and it is good, but um, I think because in general, I don't always have kind of uniform curves. Yeah. Um, I'll do kind of S curves quite often, so arms will kind of bend in a weird way um, and kind of flop around a bit more. And like here with the leg, you can see that that's not really that uniform. It has kind of a shorter side here, and you couldn't really do that ri with rubber hose. Um, and I like to be have, have a bit more control. So over maybe how you can move. explain for uh, people. Uh, so rubber hose is uh, an extension. It's yeah, it's kind of like um, a plug-in script where um, it will use. It actually kind of uses polystars, I think, to mm. um, create a curve. Um, and it's really really useful. You can kind of just parent um, a curve to a hip and a, and a, and a, and a foot, and, and that will kind of speed things up. But it's, it's it's definitely useful for things where you've got more uh, more than 
one or two contact points if a character is running and holding something um, then it's good to have that because you can just pair it in the hands to an object the feet um, and then it's, it's kind of just kind of works but the way I do things is usually just going in frame by frame and doing it by hand but so we have a question about frames and then we will answer our, your question uh, sharing um, so usually when you start an animation and we talk a little bit uh, about it because you Usually you target animated GIF and you have yeah. some technical constraints. So how, how many frames do you animate? Um, the, the limits are usually kind of set by where you're going to upload them. So yeah. for um, Tumblr, it's kind of two megabytes and Twitter, it's, I think it's three megabytes. So yeah, so if you create, a, I don't know, a 30 second animation. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's so gonna work it's kind of too heavy. From, from doing a few of them, you kind of get to get a sense of what's, what the limitations are. Hmm. And a lot of that comes from actually what's happening in the animation. Because I think the way kind of GIF compression works is some kind of boring way of it's like um it's kind of how much each pi each pixel changes o over each frame or something so yeah. if you have a, lo a lot of areas within the gif that are just a flat color background that don't change then that will help to reduce the size and give you more chance to create a longer animation but if you have something that's like a, a, a complicated pattern that's scrolling then every frame every pixel is different so yeah. that's going to make this, this file size huge straight away so you kind of want to avoid that and just keep things simple so the first thing i actually do is um i have a limited palette that i always use I, I can so even, how do you how do you pick your color theme? Well, I have a palette that I use. Oh, that's it's, your it's, palette. It's, yeah. Okay. Which one's actually a bit of an old one? I think about <laughs> eight, eight bits. I, I might have added in two or three more colors. Comes from video games, also. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's kind of partly to kind of have a starting point, so that I haven't and because I'm doing things quickly, I kind of want to have colors that I can just pick from and not have to think about colors too much. And also, if I have a color palette that I use across a lot of my gifts, then it kind of gives me a, a style that is more recognizable to me. Yeah. Um, and also it helps with um, later on when you do compress the GIF, if you've only got maybe 10 or 10 or 20 colors in there, yeah. then you can easily compress it. Okay. Um, someone is also asking about the, um, I guess it was the Puppet tool, you know, like Puppet. Uh, yeah. Do you use it sometimes? Don't use that either. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't really use any plugins. Yeah, someone's um, talking about Dewey. Yeah, I, I have never used that either. Yeah, I, mean, um, yeah. I think it's, it, those things can be used. Yeah. Um, but because I think just because I prefer to have it's like, like yeah. if you can make it work with uh, native tools yeah you know, because that's just uh, I mean what is complex in your work and looks super easy is to uh, uh, get this abstraction level where you use, use simple shapes you yeah know, and just distort the shapes and you know, look at that yeah so yeah, in this one. So uh, for the car, like, how do you do that? For well, the instance? Yeah, the because car looks really three D now. Yeah, because the, the car is three D. Ah, okay, that's right. Maybe that's right. Okay. But I, I did actually start with kind of designing it in After Effects. Um, I just did a simple kind of design from the front and the back and the side, <laughs> and then I kind of turned that into a three D model in Maya. Which I don't know if I'll sh I could, should I show you that now. Let me show you Maya. Or should I keep it in After oh, Effects? As you wish. Um, I, I don't know. We I can ask. You want to see some three D <laughs> in the chat? Well. I'm pretty sure they want to. But this is the separate render from that. And that's a separate, oh well, yeah. It's nice. just um, an image sequence that I exported <laughs> from Maya. So you create the model in Maya, but then you animate it here? Or you animate um, also in Maya? I animate in Maya as well. Okay, you animate um, in so Maya. It's just, and just, um, wow. from a, I use a kind of a simple kind of isometric camera. I guess you have to iterate a lot, no? To make it look like with the same angle and everything. Um, well, if you're using kind of an isometric camera, the, the, the camera is fixed. Oh, it's and like also you, you can export cameras from always the same angles. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and true. I kind of usually just use a, a flat camera, so there's no perspective really. Uh, and they want they want you to show it. Say yes, show okay, it. Okay, well I'll have to show open me my, uh, And maybe in the wind, in, in the meantime, we can answer our Sherwin's question. Who has question about uh, uh, how can I say that? Like your background, or I guess uh, this person is wondering if she should go to a design school or become self-taught or maybe you can talk yeah. a little bit about your background. I mean, um, I did go to university, I did like three years, did animation, um, but you don't really learn software um, at school. You kind of, you get taught kind of principles of animation maybe mm. um, or kind of theory about film and stuff, but um, it's up to you to kind of teach yourself the software because really it doesn't really matter what software you use, it's up to you. Um, once you know how to animate, you can apply that to any piece of software. Um, I chose After Effects because for me, yeah, like I've shown you, I do everything in one place and there isn't really another piece of software I think that I can do that as easily. I'll have to try and find <laughs> this project wherever it is. <laughs> and we have Martin asking, like, uh, I mean, you created the James Curran look. That's uh, well, I don't know that's if how it's it named, but like, so do you, 
um, focus like 100% of the, on, on this graphic style, or sometimes you do projects with a completely different graphic style. Um, I kind of used to do a lot um, or try and do different styles for each project, and I kind of got to a point where um, I had a few projects that which were popular, and then people would always come back to me saying, "Can you just do this thing again?" <laughs> Um, so it's, it kind of works both ways. I try and do different things in my own work in personal projects, and that kind of like gives me another style that people can come, come back to me for. But for clients, they just want you, what you've already done because um, they, they, they don't want to kind of risk allowing yeah. you to do something to, to do, do, do something different. Um, let's try to find one of these. This might be the latest one. Or it could be the wrong one. Oh, it looks. It's the right taxi, Almost but good. I think it's the wrong um, animation. Animation, maybe. Yeah, it moves. Uh. Um, there's quite a few because I used the taxi a few times, so uh, maybe I'll go back to this one. This is more more of an interesting so animation. Artfulness. Yeah, we will show some simpler animated gifs where you don't need 3D. Yeah, actually, most of your work is without. Just two. Yeah, um, um, and if I do use 3D, it's usually only kind of one object. Yeah. Um, this one's probably the more most complicated 3D one. Yeah, from, this one wasn't easy. I'm not sure whether the texture's not loading, but you can get the idea. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's the mid bolts. Yeah. And this is just done with a pretty simple kind of um, 3D model. Nothing too complicated, really. Yeah. And then I export that um, with, so without you, any you shading. You render a video yeah. with an alpha mask, and you just place it in your composition. Yeah. So I kind of forget which one that is, but um, there it is. Well, we have, we have so many good questions today. Well, it's amazing. So the Go Banana, yes, this stream will be available offline. On the Twitch channel, so click on the follow button, follow the Twitch channel, and you can access the what we call the VODs video on demand page, and this will be available. Also, we will put it on the YouTube Creative Cloud channel. So very easy to find. You just type Adobe Creative Cloud on YouTube, you will find the channel. We will post it uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so for this yeah, for so this one, this one was complex because you, you used a three D model. Yeah, but I, I, this is one where I actually exported a camera from um, Maya oh, that's into After export. Effects. Wow. So um, there's different layers that I exported. So there's like the road, um, there's the taxis, and the shadows. They're all separate, and then the camera is exported um, as a Maya ASCII file, which you can then, then import <laughs> um, as a After Effects camera. And that the, the uh, locators in Maya will convert to nulls um, in After Effects, which you can then use to kind of parent things like particles. Like yeah, here, particles, here I use yeah. particles for the kind of the meatball smashing into yeah. the road. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of simple things like that, really. But it kind of helps to integrate the 2D into the 3D and kind of blend them, so you don't really know yeah. which one's which. That's good. I can feel your video game background. Yeah, I, I think it kind of comes from that, the kind of repetition yeah. and just kind of the, the ca kind of cameras and things that I use. So do you have an example for, uh, for um, a pure 2D animation, but that where you give a feel that it looks like 3D? Yeah. Like you tricked me. Yeah, uh, I'm trying morning. to think of one which, okay, I've got one. One of the later ones with the penguins. I think that oh, was the a good penguins. one because the penguin, there's no 3D in so that, cute. but people always think it is. Um, here we go. So yeah, this one is all 2D, but the penguins do kind of look 3D. Oh yeah, and these are just shapes. Just shape. Look at layers. the white shape, like. Yeah. If you focus on the shapes, you can feel what's happening. But you have to play with the layers too, so you have to duplicate a lot, you know, to to get give this yeah. sense of a Z order you know, of depth. I mean, if I actually show you in detail, you're gonna notice that it's not like perfect, but that, it doesn't really matter that much. Like if you look at his beak, it doesn't really open in a 3D way, but because it's so quickly <laughs> and there's a lot of movement, it, can, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. It kind of disguises it a bit. I um, like for the legs, you have to duplicate the legs, right? Because at some yeah. point it goes beneath. So I'll show you all the keyframes. There's a lot going on, but... And um, now Pascalibor, this is not 3D, just 2D shapes. Just Moving 2D space. shapes. So yeah, this one's the uh, this leg here. Um, and you can see that there's keyframes on the opacity. So when that gets to the point where it needs to switch to the 
the back leg yeah. that'll turn off and then there's a du yeah, just duplicate of that yeah. Yeah. in nice. the back um, <laughs> nice. this one here and you've got you've got, just got to kind of animate the, the shape of the path here so it kind of gives yeah. you a sense that it is kind of a little closer and yeah that's good and it's just kind of like trial and error really to make it like good. The, the hardest thing for this with this one was the, the the flippers because they're kind of waving to swim. Oh yeah, and also moving in three D. So it's so kind of scale and is and it's moving, moving in like every direction at once. Oh yeah, this is not easy. That's something I didn't bother doing with the beak, which just kind of opens and closes as his head's spinning. So it's a bit weird. So we had a question about also um, how you promote yourself and where do you get some. Uh, Client work, like uh, yeah, I use social networks. Yeah, I use most kind of social platforms. I use Tumblr first. That's still kind of my biggest one. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of interest through that, and then I use Instagram as well and Dribble, and they they all seem to kind of be equally useful, and you get kind of different clients from different places. Um, but I think the best thing to do is just spread yourself across as many places as possible, yeah, and then more, more people will find you. So just be everywhere. Be everywhere, yeah, and, yeah. and constantly be updating and co constantly posting things, whatever it is. That's a good thing about yeah. gifts. You can you can make one in a day, um, put it online, and you can get a lot of kind of feedback off one animation that you spend a day on, compared to making like a short film, which might take you weeks, and you might only get the same amount of kind of views from that. So yeah, and there is this thing about uh, being everywhere and also being active everywhere, like uh, make connections, like appreciate other projects, make sure you you get in touch with other designers using these social networks. And yeah, definitely on Twitter. That's a good place for that. Move. Just. Yeah, talking to other animators. And okay, so someone wants to know, uh, want to learn like how to animate like this, like 2D shapes. So what would be your advice? Yeah, online tutorials. Or? Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure where they are. I haven't seen any. So um, yeah, because it's really. Uh, I think the best thing to do is just kind of keep it simple. I mean, yeah, because the, the basics here, and um, these are like basics, um, basic use case of After Effects. So it's. It's more about um, it's a pure design challenge here. Yeah. Like how? Okay, should be back now. Oh, this is you working on the beard. <laughs> yeah, well, I had a beard trim that day, so I did an animation about that. It's kind of a bit obscure, but. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, again here, there's a bit of 3D that you don't really notice. The mower is 3D, um, but the character's not. Um, I have to go in and find all the bits, but yeah, you can see here. The mower and his hands are a separate render. Oh, nice. Which did, I don't really have to do that in 3D, it's just that because yeah. it needed the perspective and stuff, it was kind of a quicker solution to build a simple model than trying to draw that with shapes and get it to look right. And with the movement of the handle, you kind of wanted to have a bit of perspective on it. Um, but then you kind of just match the movement a little bit with the 3D render. I think it's, it kind of helps to have one 3D object in the scene um, as a kind of a reference point for how mm -hmm. to make the other 2D parts look. So that's kind of a good way to um, to start really. So if you have, I think I've done some before, um, they aren't in this project, but um, I don't know if I can find it really. It might be too hard to find. But I did a, an animation with the tennis player, um, which oh. is all 2D apart from the racket, but I was kind of started with the racket as kind of the starting point, because that's 3D. That's yeah. And then if you have that, it kind of makes the rest of it look 3D around that as it's moving. Nice. So Weiji, uh, the resolution he's using is uh, 1080p because he's streaming now. And um, so, what? Okay, we had other questions also. Like, do you use expressions in After Effects? Um, yeah, I use um, expressions mainly for things like linking paths together. Okay. Um, so, I don't know if there's any in this. I might not bother to do it. Um, doesn't seem to be. But th like for, for every example, or oh, well not that one. But if you look at the. Um, leg here oh no I didn't do that but you, sometimes what, what I'll do rather than having um, 
the same path duplicated with the same keyframes pasted onto each path. You can just parent um, a path to another one. Yeah. So, and then you can, it's kind, of, it's kind of similar to what you do with rubber hose, but you, and then you can just trim the, the top layer of the mm. path. Um, I'll have to kind of see if I can find one. So Maybe Alex, one. so James is using Maya because he started with, with Maya. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably recommend using something like Cinema 4D rather than Maya. Yeah, because today, it's yeah. easy to get into. Yeah. And I think the integration with After Effects is yeah, probably a better. bit easier. Um, it's not that easy with Maya. You kind of have to do some workarounds to make it work. And someone is asking, uh, M. Wilmes, uh, how do you start a project? Like, do you sketch on paper? Or? No. Um, I do everything directly yeah. in After Effects. Usually, I just kind of have a, a rough idea of something that I want to animate, and then I'll just go in. And then the, the idea kind of develops as I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, what I'll start with is... And yes, David, it will be available on the YouTube channel, the Creative Cloud channel, yes. The replay. What I start with is just, just this. So okay. it's just literally just blank. blank with a palette. And then I'll just kind of think about what I'm going to do. So I'll just yeah. usually start Maybe with you can start background. background. Yeah. Just um, Yellow background. I quite like a yellow background. And then if I'm going to do a character, I'll start with the head. So Pascal says that it seems that a lot of players want us to have experience with Maya. I guess it depends on the industry. In motion yeah. design, I'm surprised because a lot of motion designers are using Cinema 4D today. But in the game industry, yeah. Yeah, I think gaming and like film and things, they still use Maya because that's kind of what it's for. It's, kind yeah. of, it's pretty advanced. Um, but if you're just doing kind of motion design, um, it's generally kind of simpler things that you need it for. It's just kind of adding in little 3D elements. Um, it's not going to be for a whole project. And there was a good question from uh, James, uh, like any tips for making them loop so well? Uh, yeah, um, I think the best thing to do is um, overlap things as much as possible. Oh, yeah. So rather than having like something which is clearly kind of a start and end point in a, in a loop, um, find a way to make it feel more seamless by the, the animations being continuous. Mm. Um, some, sometimes that might be by kind of repeating the same thing, but overlapping um, the two versions of it. So if you have kind of a character walking across the screen, um, you'd have another one come in before that one leaves, if that makes sense. So I'm pretty for pretty sure that Liam Gallagher is a friend of yours because probably he's yeah. getting I think I know who he pretty is. Pretty personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? Oh, interesting, Marco. Uh, thanks for asking. So who are the kind of clients that ask for animated GIF like this? You know, and, and and what is the use case? Um, recently, like change. clients is anyone really. I get a lot of requests from like big co corporate big company like uh, yeah. banks. Yeah, banks sometimes kind of like um, or kind of more creative um, companies that you would expect it from or kind of I did some work recently with um, Vitamin Water, which is Coke. Um, oh, Coke. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's big clients, the small clients. Really. I think everyone's kind of using it now because like social media, Instagram, Twitter is so big. Yeah, I guess you do. Yeah. So we see a lot more and more animated GIFs on, uh, on social networks and also in email campaigns because more and more email clients can handle animated GIFs. And websites too, you know, just yeah. websites. So why do you use rectangles and give them rounded corner instead of just using the ellipse tool? Because uh, you have more control. Um, when I don't like thing, I guess when you bl make the eyes blink, um, I oh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the nose, that's not the eyes. I named it wrong. <laughs> Here we oh, go. No, it's, it's the whole face, it's fine. Um, yeah, when eyes blink, blink, I prefer it if they're, they blink like that ah, rather yeah, than yeah. being like a squashed circle. I just say it's kind of cleaner. Details. Um, but either way, it's fine. I, I do do it sometimes with a circle and when I forget nice. to use rectangles, but it really kind of depends. Don't forget to follow us, uh, follow the Adobe Twitch channel. There is a follow button at the bottom. In five minutes, we will do the first giveaway and give away a Creative Cloud subscriptions for uh, you people in the chat. Uh, we'll randomly pick someone. So 
make sure you follow the channel and be active in the chat. What is the best resolution for an animated GIF to use in social networks? Ah, good question. Yeah, um, I think it depends on the platform. Like um, Tumblr is, I think the, it's 540 is the best width. 540? So 540 by, yeah. four, by 40. I, I think Instagram is 640. Um, it is, but actually usually upload things at 1080. Um, oh, I, yeah. I don't know why. I think, uh, I don't for know. For retina screens, difference. I think. Now they make Yeah, but I'm not actually sure if it converts it yeah. to a different size, but that's kind of what I usually do. Um, it might not be the best way. <laughs> I will try and get to a point where I can animate this. But. Yeah, don't worry, yeah. You have to be active in five minutes. Thanks for answering all the questions. Yeah, you're welcome. Jess, James is here for you. Do you prefer working on GIF projects for clients or longer videos? Ah, because um, GIF is it's true. It's kind of challenging, you know. Like motion design, you would prefer to okay, just give me one minute, you know. Yeah, I mean, I like doing both. I mean, the, the perfect thing for me is with, with GIFs, I tend to do it all myself. So I'll do all the animation, um, all the illustration, and everything. Um, but for longer projects, I usually kind of direct them recently. Mm -hmm. So I'll work with other teams of animators, um, which means I can kind of do both at the same time. Yeah. I can direct one thing and do GIFs on, the, uh, on my own. Yeah. Um, and that's the perfect situation for me. But I, I generally don't like animating long things on my own anymore because it's just too much work. And um, yeah, I kind of maybe lose focus on longer things for that long. But Yeah, maybe. Or you can do a series like you did for New York. Like, uh, exactly, yeah, that's know, the thing. I, mean, if, I think small for me, making something longer, um, I, what I tend to do is usually build something up out of lots of small Oh, things. there's the movie maybe we can show. You know, with, uh, the, with the Yeah. Uh, this one is great, guys. You'll love it. That's the wrong one. Where did I put <laughs> it? We know this one already. So, yeah. 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 And uh, so yeah, you you worked with uh, sound yeah, this designer. was with um, David Camp. He's a really good sound designer in um, Berlin. So did, so did you decided to spend thirty days in New York. Yeah, which, which is cool. Yeah, that's kind of the main reason for doing it. I just wanted to be in New York for a month. Yeah. I thought yeah. while I'm there, I should give myself something to do. So I thought I'd do a GIF every day. And also, like I was saying, it's easy for me to do a longer project if I can break it down into small things that I can then put together as one long thing so um, it all seems to be a good, good idea I'm not sure if I could actually do one a day I hadn't done that, that before I usually take a few days to do each one um, but it was actually a lot easier than I expected <laughs> you kind of, if you're forcing yourself to do it you can surprise yourself with how many ideas you can come up with yeah. but it, it, they were all based on something that I did that day so I'd spend a few hours just kind of like walking around maybe going and see a site that I wanted to see that day and then go home go to an office and yeah. spend a few hours working they have big rats you know, and big, they do big yeah big squirrels yeah, that's, that's really surprising <laughs> and the meatball oh this is the project you were with the meatballs in yeah. 3D It was, it was always the plan to turn this into a longer thing, ideally with sound, but it, the sound turned out much better than I thought it would do. But I think because it's the, I kind of always try and, I think one thing that's also helpful with GIFs in general without sound is to kind of add a sense of rhythm in there. So yeah. um, try and like hit beats with oh, yeah. when the certain movements in the animation happen. Um, if you're repeating something, make sure it happens. Like with the, the penguins here eating the fish, um, they'll eat the fish kind of on the same beats. And when you add sound to that, that really works well. But even without it, you kind of it makes it kind of more hypnotic, mm. having like a visual rhythm that you can kind of yeah, see in the animation. Nice, thanks. Uh, so Jack, you cannot see it, but James is working with a, a Wacom tablet here. Yeah, I do also have a Cintiq, but I don't really use it that much. I mean, um, I do quite often work with the, with the trackpad on my laptop. Yeah. Like if I'm somewhere that's kind of more remote. Um, I don't always have my tablet with me. Really the, just, uh, what is the average time for each GIF? 
so yeah so it, um, it has to, you have to keep it short because of the weight like the, the size of the GIF at the end yeah um, I think like three seconds three to five seconds mm -hmm. is a good target to aim for some, sometimes over, th over five can be a problem some, I've done some that are like ten seconds depending on what's happening in them um, the main thing is kind of keeping in mind how much movement's in there so if you know that it's going to be a complicated movement then you need to keep the animation shorter and it's kind of once you've done a few of them you kind of get a sense for the balance of that and um M Will is asking like do you work sometimes with uh photographic items like photos in your work or not so much anymore i used to do more of that i used to oh. I, mean, I used to just do kind of more traditional motion graphics oh yeah for effects, video game industry. um or just even like commercials and things i do okay. a lot of that um I think the principles are kind of the same for either one, but for making GIFs, photographic things are hard to work with because it instantly adds in like thousands of colors and then it makes it hard to compress things below a certain size. Um, so I prefer to just use flat colors. I mean, even like using gradients is a problem. Mm. So it's, it kind of makes sense just to keep it flat as much as possible. And someone says, I can't wait to start using After Effects, yeah. If you want to try, you can go on adobe.com and uh, just download um, a free trial. You will get it for 30 days and have a good idea of what you can do with it. And Sabs, yes, there will be a replay on the Twitch channel. Just follow the Adobe Twitch channel. Uh, we have the vote section, the video on demand, and also it will be available on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Okay, so so I will let you draw for three minutes because they they want me to do the giveaway thing. Okay. So we do the giveaway. Okay, so for the giveaway you have to be okay, let me launch it first and I will tell you how it works, but we will pick someone uh to get a one year credit cloud subscription. So just need to launch it first. Okay, guys, so uh, to have a chance, a better chance uh, to, um, to win the one year Creative Cloud subscriptions, which includes After Effects, by the way, of course, just uh, say something in the chat now and follow the Adobe Tweet channel. It will increase your chances. Okay, I give you 30 seconds and then I will uh, run the algorithm to uh, pick someone in the chat. And we, they can still. Um, what you drawing as we do that can i answer this <laughs> <laughs> okay okay now now you are hype hyper hyperactive this is this is when you realize that there are a lot of people watching yeah okay thanks for being with us again They spread people. Oh no, they want Creative Cloud. I mean, I get it. <laughs> okay, let me run this. Okay, and the winner is, but you have to say something in the chat to say, yeah, I won. You have to say something to win. Is, and of course, this is impossible to pronounce. Oh my god. Ayrton CX, A Y R T O N CX. How would you pronounce that? Ayrton CX? Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's not easy. Yeah, so Ayrton CX, just say something in the chat. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, I will send you a, a message on Twitch right after the live, okay? So check your uh, message box, okay? And you get a one-year Credit Plus subscription. Congratulations. Congratulations for the hard work. Okay, oh, there is a hole. Yeah. There is a hole, guys. 
So now you have all your shapes. So do you want to start animating? This? Yeah, I'll just do something really simple. Yeah, I was going to have him yeah. pop up out of a hole. So if you... Like a rabbit. Exactly. So what I've done, I've built the character and then just pre-comped him into a separate comp. And behind that, there's a hole. And then I've kind of duplicated that hole okay. with another rectangle to use as a mask so that when he moves in and out of the hole, it masks him properly. Nice. Um, and then I usually use a frame rate of 24 frames a second. Okay. Um, 24 FPS. Mainly because for walk cycles and things, that kind of works quite well. I have like a 12 frame walk <laughs> the cycle. The character usually. looks a bit like you, yeah. Yeah. That's the point. Like. That's the point. <laughs> Um, and like a, uh, actually a walk would be 36 frames usually and it runs 12 frames so once you're kind of dividing things up it usually works well um, so if you start by just having him animate up and then give him like a little bit of a bounce oh and Arton he, he has a creative code license that, that was about to expire it's lucky so, for him lucky guy is After Effects difficult to learn for a beginner? I would say that it's not the easiest, of course, creative app <laughs> to learn in the street. But if you are very sensitive to animation, timeline, uh, it will be very easy to get. And also it's so um, uh, rewarding, you know, when you create animation. That's what I like with After Effects is that you, you have a quick uh, feedback, you know, when you create yeah. something and you can see it, export it as a video, oh, and we have to show how to create an animated GIF. We have some questions yeah, about it. Yeah, I'll get to that once I've got something I can export so, as an animation. And there are tons of uh, free tutorials on YouTube and also professionals tu professional tutorials that you can buy, video tutorials on uh, linda.com, for instance. Um, so, it, yeah. And it's good, like, motion design is very trendy. I mean, it's uh, in the design industry. It's, uh, it's good to have these skills. Oh, how did you add that bounce effect so smoothly? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. You just um, add a few keyframes. This is just um, as he comes to a rest, you're just yeah, kind just of timing. Yeah, it's kind of timing and just kind of like so overextending it a bit. So he moves up a bit higher than he needs to be and then drops down below and um, just kind of ease the keyframes at the end, really. And then with the head, you kind of do the same thing. Um, but kind of offset it by a couple of frames so the head's got a bit of a delay behind the body. <laughs> nice. And it's kind of just doing that and adding it to each element. So I'll do, I'll do the same with the hair. Um, um, no, he's not using custom easing, just the basic one. Yeah, I just use the basic easing. I, I will sometimes go in and adjust the velocity and then I might go in and look at the graphs afterwards. Um, but really, I kind of start with the basic. And because I'm doing, th doing things so quickly, usually I don't mm. really spend too much time. <laughs> it's more about kind of just um, spacing of keyframes, really. And kind of keeping the movement subtle. I think and don't move it too much. RGBook wants to see the makeup of arm arm movement. Oh, I guess something yeah. like this. Yeah. He would he would show it afterwards. I might add some arm. Is it only a deformation of the form? Yes, that's what he's using. It's just drawing a shape, a path, and he would play with the path. Actually, I'm probably not going to do it with the position. I think. With and the someone is asking, like, uh, any thoughts on motion V2? I don't know what that is. Yeah, you see, just <laughs> just use the keyframes, man. Let's see that there are so many good uh, plugins, especially when you start, yeah. you know, and you want to. I mean, to I think the best thing to do is not think about plugins too much because if, if yeah. you can learn to animate without any plugins then if then they might yeah, help you out later on but yeah. you're not really going to learn the basics if you kind of rely on them too much i think um it's better to kind of just read a book on animation and pedro he's just using a path for the character limbs he doesn't use a rubber hose no not well i i have seen it sometimes okay, but yeah. for these things i generally don't i mean uh, it's, it's pretty new our oh, connection dropped again come on or is it back?
Now we have expressions in the chat. For automatic bounce movement, you can use this. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, Gerald. I think oh the problem I think the problem with doing that is that you don't have any control over it once you, well you do, you can change the expression, but it's yeah. like, um, I'd much rather kind of be able to do that by hand than by, by typing in different numbers, personally. Even though I do have like a background in video games where um, code is obviously more important. Uh, more details about the exporting process. Yeah, we will, we will we will show you how to export this animation actually into animated GIF. You will be surprised. You would expect something like file export to animated GIF in After Effects, but that would be too easy. Yeah, this is something that used to be in the app in the product like a few years ago. But then uh, we, when I say we, like Adobe decided to. Uh, to stop this feature because no one would ever use animated GIF anymore. And one year after it became trendy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the story of software. When you discontinue some feature to focus on something else and, and then it becomes trendy. Can you edit the hair like if you import a, a file and just convert each shape to your vector layers? Yes, you can, James. Uh, actually, now you can even use Creative Code libraries. So you can um, um, just um, work in Illustrator and use Creative Code libraries to exchange some assets and convert to vector shapes. GIFs out box, yes. How to how to create a loop? Yep, uh, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to loop this character. In a, in a way. So if you just duplicate the same one, have him and have that one. Are you a fan of animation like Pingu? Not recently. <laughs> I second from Liam. Liam is very tricky. Yeah, I know who that is. <laughs> I can tell his jokes. <laughs> okay, so I guess, yeah, of course you need to have the same space and everything. There we go. Where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get your ideas from? You see, you have the two same questions. In the yeah, I mean, I just think of them. It's not like I really have a <laughs> particular way of thinking of them. I just kind of, um, um, I might start with an idea, like the stuff I did in New York, I'd do something that day and that would kind of inspire something. But I think you can pretty much make a fun loop out of almost anything. Um, so here I'm trying to re trying to loop the same animation, um, but offset it so that it will end and start the same place that it starts. So for this one here, at the end, you want him to start there. Should probably change the order of these to make sense.
So inspiration, yeah, he was saying that he's, there is not really an inspiration source. It's just playing around every day, you know, trying yeah. stuff, and you will find a loop. Like with this, I'm just making um, it up. Are you interested in cinematographs? You know, with, uh, yeah, they're interesting, say, yeah? but I don't really make them myself. I think, um, like I was saying before, it kind of makes it harder yeah. to export something within a certain limit. Um, when you're doing that, because you've got so much more, it's much more complex image with photos and video than you do with something like this, which is just made up of simple colors and kind of block backgrounds. So is this just trial and error to get the animation to start and end on the same frame? Um, well, not really. You I mean, can calculate it's, it. It's kind of, it's kind, of, yeah, it's kind of basic. Um, maths I guess so it's kind of good to have a bit of an understanding of that see I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here but I'm kind of messing <laughs> it up um, but what you've got to do basically is just find the thing that how it is at the end and then you need to reposition it so that that is at the start and then whatever the th part that's animating is is parented to that Dark Toto is asking, is After Effects the best software for animation? So it depends on what kind of animation. If it's to animate, uh, I would say, I mean, to output movies with uh, combining bitmaps, vector shapes, yeah, that's the best, especially for 2D. Um, if it's more like a cartoon style, and when you draw frame by frame, then Adobe Animate is more for that, also for vector uh, drawing. You have more tools, more control on the output, especially for the web. So yeah, it depends on the purpose in the final use case, I would say. And uh, Storym is asking any good motion events festivals in Europe. Oh, we talked about it. Yeah. In my life, there are not so many. Th there are some. I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick to Plasma um, yep. next month Pixel in Plasma. Berlin. Um, there is Off, also that is very good, uh, in Barcelona at the end of May. There is um, uh, Motion Plus Design in Paris. We just had one edition last year but there will be uh, probably a second one at the end of the year but there are not so many like 100 person focused on motion design it's true so anyway i've got i've got a very simple loop here i mean you can add more to it you can add arms and um, things if you really wanted to <laughs> maybe you should show the export yeah and are you going to blend 2017 what you were asking um, I think I will. Yeah, I didn't go this year because I was kind of, it was kind of just before I went to New York, and I couldn't really do two cl trips that close together. But I think I'll definitely go. Um, is it next year or this year? I don't know. Twenty sixteen. Is, is the one this year? Or is it every two years? I don't know. But I'll go, I'll go, I'll, I'll go to the next <laughs> you one. Go to the next sure. one. Yeah, yeah, that's the answer. Any good tutorials, resources I would recommend to start. So first, you can check the Adobe website. There are some free tutorials, and maybe Linda.com, YouTube. Yeah, I haven't really used any recently. I think the best thing to do, I mean, I, the way I did kind of start learning After Effects is by looking at projects that I liked and then kind of on my own, figuring out a way to recreate what they'd done. I wouldn't necessarily kind of share that online, but I think if you can figure out how someone's doing something on your own, then you kind of figure out your own techniques and that kind of develops your own style from doing that. Um, but I think it's important to do that rather than just copying somebody else's stuff. <laughs> So I'm just going to export this as a QuickTime. Um, I don't really change the settings. I kind of use the default QuickTime export, so it's it's kind of uncompressed. Um, you could compress it. I don't think it would make much difference. Um, one of the tutorials, and these are in French. Video copilot, yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, I used to use that. That's kind of one of the things I started out on, but I used it such a long time ago that I'm not sure what it's like now. Um, but their early tutorials are definitely some of the best that I saw at the, oh. time, at the time for kind of just figuring out how to use keyframes and basic effects and things, even though I don't really use effects anymore. <laughs> um, anything you can do to kind of teach yourself just how to use After Effects will kind of give you ideas of how to use the other elements within it. Because there's, there's so much within the software that I don't use, but um, it's not that hard to pick up um, once you know one part of it. Like if you can keyframe just position, scale, rotation, then you can keyframe anything else. and um, if you figure out that stuff and that the things like the graph editor, um, then it applies to all parts of the software, really. 
So just going to export that. It's just a so you just render um, yeah uncompressed quick time. Uncompressed you could compress it if you wanted movie. to. Um, one thing that I don't know if it's just something that is in my settings, but I, I always change the working space the SRGB uh, just because. Oh. Once you export it as a GIF, um, the colors will be different yeah. um, to what you see in After Effects if you don't. That's so kind of important if you want it to look how you expect. Um, and then if you just import that GIF, I mean, there's different ways to import videos into Photoshop. Um, you can just open a video yeah. and then that will give it you a, a, as a different way that, than if you do it through this way, which is what I've always done, um, which, okay. um, which is import video frames to layers. And then if you just import a quick time it just gives you oh yeah that's layers cool. for every frame in the animation um, and then all I do is export safer web and select GIF yeah. and that's it yeah I mean I, I, don't, I usually don't change any settings I keep I try and keep the colors as high as possible mm -hmm. um, without keeping the file size here um, without making that go above two megabytes ideally for, for tumblr um, all I'll change really <coughs> is the dithering. Um, I usually lower that to 75% just because if you don't, sometimes you'll get issues with, um, I'm not sure why it's doing this, but anyway, um, sometimes you'll get issues with colors not being solid. They'll kind of add kind of um, slight pixelation oh, yeah. to kind of make up the colors. So this is 1080p. 1080. Yeah. yeah, so it's going to be big. I mean, normally yeah. I do things at 540. Okay, here we go. It's doing some weird thing with the uh, masking of the... the uh, so you don't use uh, motion blur? No, that's one thing. If you do motion blur or anything like that, then it starts adding in gradients in the colors. And if you do that, then it's just adding in like hundreds of more, more colors in the palette, mm -hmm. which is kind of what you want to avoid with GIFs, because um, I could probably reduce this to 64 colors and it'd still export with, and wouldn't look much different. And Kuhn is asking, why don't you use Adobe Media Encoder to export it directly as a GIF? Uh, first, I'm not sure if it's still there. Yeah, I don't know if it is either. Um, <laughs> uh, but the, and the thing is that, I mean, what I like with Photoshop is that you, you really have full control because you get the preview. And you yeah. can say, oh my God, this color is not faithful. So you can yeah. modify it just before you export it. So that's what I like. I think it's just the way that I've always done things. So even if they do <laughs> add, add that to After Effects uh, as a feature, I'd probably still do it through Photoshop just because that's what I'm used to. Um, but maybe if they added a really great GIF export. And someone's talking about GIF Gun. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I think I, it was... Um, GIF Gun for the win. Sent something about that, but I haven't looked at it. Has been removed from the encoder. Yeah, thanks, yeah, you sure that's, that's what I thought. So that's the story, by the way, about exporting to GIF when Adobe decided to remove this feature because no one was using GIF. And then it became trendy. So again, how to export to Photoshop. So once you have a composition, you render the composition. So you go in the composition menu and you say add to render queue and you just render a video, okay? With the default settings and compressed and RGB colors. And then once you get the video, you just drag and drop it in Photoshop or import it and you save for the web So you just render it and then you, you can do it two different ways. Like I might try it the other way. You can either do it by import video frames to layers, which will give you um, a huge list of layers for each frame in the animation, or you can just open the um, QuickTime, which will open as a timeline in Photoshop. Um, I did hear that one issue that gives you is when you go to export, um, yeah, for some reason, when you when, if you import the way that I did before, um, it will set the looping options to forever. But if you import it by opening oh, yeah. the QuickTime, for some reason oh, it I defaults to once, um, which yeah, yeah. people kind of mean. forget to do. So it's, you've got, you've got, you have to make sure that it's forever. So yes, yeah, so to um, export M, um, yeah. So, so we just repeat it quickly. Composition, add to render queue. You just export a full uh, resolution video without any compression, RGB colors and you just import the video in Photoshop and save for the web. Yeah, because there is no export to GIF. Like you really have to say save for the web and it will, yeah. and Photoshop okay. actually detects that, oh, okay, it's an animation. Yeah. So it will create an animated GIF. And think for me that the workflow 
it does make sense because for whatever I'm going to convert the animation to in the end anyway, I will always yeah. export an uncompressed, like full size um, QuickTime version of it first and then use either Media Encoder or Photoshop to convert that to what I need it to be. You know, it doesn't make sense to render things straight away in, as a compressed format because then you never get a chance to kind of tweak the settings to make it look as good as possible. And yes, you can watch the replay later. It will be either on Twitch or also on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Uh, I should post it uh, tomorrow. Creative Cloud YouTube channel. And you can replay everything and try to recreate this animation. I'll go back to the, the um, New York project because I know someone was asking about limbs. Oh, yeah. It would be easier to open something up that I've already done rather than starting from scratch. Yeah, that's true. It's a lot of work. Uh, someone is asking, like, do you update your uh, Creative Cloud uh, apps uh, every time um, there is a new update? Or um, I do. Uh, I, yeah. I, I just update, updated After Effects thing yesterday. Okay. Um, so that's the latest. Yeah. One. Um, I generally find it's stable enough to do that. I mean, yeah. I think because I'm only using just a limited part of the, the software yeah, to what right. I do. And you don't rely on plugins. So no. So that's a good site. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I, I use some. I, I use um, Particular. Um, oh, yeah, Particular. That's yeah. pretty much the only one that I do. I'm trying to find the one that I did with the coat because that's the best one, I think, for... I'm not sure what day that was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was actually in the middle somewhere. Maybe someone can tell me what day did I try coat on. Uh, there we go. So here is a good arm and animation. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we'll be with James to still a little bit again because we can go over time just a little yeah. bit. And uh, we'll do one more giveaway, okay, before saying goodbye. We'll give away one more credit card subscription. So stay with us. So here's an animation I did of him trying coats on, or me trying coats on. And there's the three versions of it that each start and end with a different color. Um, as the coat changes color, <laughs> um, but within it's just the same animation, just, just duplicated. But if you look at the arms for this one, there's different versions of the arms for front or back, depending on when the coat's going on. It gets a bit complicated. But all it is is just animating a path um, frame by frame, like you can see the shape of the arm. And just kind of doing it, kind of like by eye, kind of just trial and error really until it looks smooth. Because um, it's such a, just a fast movement, um, yeah. you kind of get away with it being a bit kind of not perfect. And it's just kind of figuring out how the hand. And, and again, I, I would kind of start with the hands on this probably before they kind of did the arms, um, get the hands to move through the coat, and then add the arms afterwards. I think for this, I probably did do it with um, expressions. Maybe. Oh, someone wants to know where they can find the color palette. Just take a screenshot. Yeah, Kyle. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Kyle had the same idea. <laughs> Here's an express. It's just, it's just a simple expression to link this path, which is the the, oh, cu okay. the cuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to link it to your to your the other arm path. here, which is kind of the main animation control. So the sleeve and the cuff are linked to that, and then they're just trimmed to whatever length they need to be. And then, yeah. As and the hand, as someone is asking, is just a yeah. The hand, shape. just an, uh, another. Sh I'm not sure if I kept the fingers separate or not, but um, it's just a circle with paths for the fingers. So I guess I guess he just duplicated the jacket layers and just changed the color. Yeah. You could even use the tint effect. Yeah, <laughs> just to exactly the same composition just yeah just tint it i think that using things like tint um but you would lose the you, yeah it, the you don't right. always get the accurate colors that you no. want and um you sometimes get a bit of weirdness kind of on yeah. the in between colors it's better to kind of just do it from the start rather than using effects i find so yeah that's it nice like that. okay so Maybe to, to wrap up, maybe we can talk about your future projects and how we can follow you. Uh, I will display here his uh, Twitter account at the bottom. So it's at uh, Slim Gym Studios. Yep, that's, that's, the right. that's the same on Instagram and uh, oh, you should everything see it else. Here. 
Slim Jim Studio, same on Instagram. And uh, yeah, make sure to, to, to follow James on Instagram too. Uh, he will publish more and more. Yeah, um, I'm planning on doing another uh, month long gift with at some point. Um, when I can find the time, the problem from doing this is you get busy from doing jobs, so he's kind of hard <laughs> to take a month off. But I'm definitely going to do it at some point. Um, not sure where yet, but I'll announce that on Twitter or something soon. Cool. And uh, so we'll do one more uh, giveaway. Okay, let me just uh, give me the time to launch my app again. So can we download open files? Uh, no, not this file, sorry. <laughs> you will have to watch the, the real play and uh, do it by yourself, I guess. It's crazy, you know, just shapes, uh, shapes, colors, just... I think it's a good exercise just to try to draw a head, you know, and yeah. do it like exactly what you did. I mean, it's very good. Okay, so giveaways. Are you guys broadcasting from Shoreditch? No, we are broadcasting from uh, Paris today. <laughs> So he took the train, the Eurostar. Yeah. And we do one more giveaway. So uh, say something in the chat and follow the Adobe Twitch channel to get more chances. So there is a follow button at the bottom of the player. And say something in the chat. I give you 30 seconds and then we will pick someone in the chat who will get a one year credit card subscription, which includes After Effects. Okay, chat's getting very active. Mm. Edinburgh. <laughs> good luck, good luck. <laughs> Flood time, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's pick someone and uh, let's try to read the name because that's al always the the most challenging part. Uh, okay, so the winner is Dare Le One. Yeah. Dare Le One, but you have to say something in the chats such as "Yay!" We have to see that you are alive. Dare Le One, who is following uh, the Adobe Twitch channel since uh, March 16. Yeah, okay, we saw you. Okay, the other one, I will send you a message uh, in a few minutes, also with Ayrton CX. Both of you won one year credit card subscriptions. Congratulations. Yeah, and uh, so this masterclass uh, will be on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel very soon, tomorrow, hopefully. And um, please remember to follow uh, Gems. In Jim Studios, I will display the name again to follow his uh, future adventures. Yeah, and uh, maybe another Gfaten. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I uh, should be in Berlin next month. I picked up oh, in Berlin doing yeah. like a Q and A after the screening of this the video for this. Okay, and you can yeah say uh, thank you to James uh, in the chat who uh, traveled to Paris just for you, just for this masterclass and. Uh, Make sure you follow the Adobe Tweet channel. We'll be back in uh, two hours live on the Adobe channel. And we will have the with us one of the product managers of Adobe Muse. That's a surprise. Uh, live from San Francisco, I will be uh, chatting with her and she will uh, show us what is new in Adobe Muse. I don't know if you know this app. It's an app to create um, websites, web pages without coding, just uh, designing the pages. And, and now you can make responsive pages. So that's new. And, that's what they will introduce. So cool. This should be interesting. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Gems. And um, thank you. see you soon on the Adobe Twitch channel. Bye, guys.